right, in this video, we are going to practice setting up and creating reports with sub-customers. Now, the exercise is going to be over here on the right-hand side that we will follow along with, and this is pulled from our Advanced Level Pro Advisor Certification course. If you would like more information about that course after we go through the exercise, be sure to click on that link below in the description. Let's see what we're going to do today. This exercise has four parts with the scenario for each shown as you go through the exercise. Be sure to do all four parts of this exercise in the same sample company session. So as I mentioned up here, you need to be in the sample company to do this exercise. Now, if you're not sure how to get into the sample company or get your own free QBOA account, be sure to click on the link below in the description. I have the sample company pulled up here on the left hand side, um, and this is what we are going to be working in today. So again, be sure to do all four parts of this scenario in the same session of the sample company. So let's get started with the first part. One of Craig's customers, Freeman Sporting Goods, has just acquired a new location. They will be renting the empty lot next to the local high school and will be setting up temporary tents whenever there is a home game. They have contracted with Craig to make sure the shrubbery is cleaned up and the grass is mowed so that they can easily move the tent and set up when necessary. They have decided that their Ocean View Road location will manage this and pay any bills incurred with, for the new lot, but Craig wants to track his income and expenses for this separately. So how would we set this up? Let's go ahead and find out. We will create a new high school lot customer that is a sub-customer of Freeman's Ocean View Road location. So to get this set up from the left navigation bar, we need to hover over sales and then select customers. The left navigation bar is over here. We're gonna hover over sales and then select customers. Now this uh, high school lot is going to be a new customer. So go ahead and click on new customer, not the down arrow, but the new customer itself. In the customer display name field, we're going to type high school lot. So go ahead and type that. <clears throat> Click the checkbox next to is a sub customer that is down here on the bottom part of the name and contact card. Go ahead and click on that. And then the parent company, we want to select the Ocean View Road location. So click on that down arrow. You're going to scroll down. You see Freeman Sporting Goods. Here is that 0969 Ocean View Road. This is what it is a sub customer of. So go ahead and click on their name. Now note that when the parent customer, that Ocean View, was selected, the contact information automatically appeared, all up here. The checkbox next to bill parent customer should already be selected, but just make sure that it remains checked. That is this right here, and that's because as we mentioned in the scenario, all of the billing would go to the Ocean View Road location. So everything is good here. All we need to do now is just click on save. Click on that green button right there. And there we go, we have now created a new customer, this high school lot, which is that sub-customer of the Ocean View Road location. So part two of this scenario, Craig bought $100 worth of fertilizer from Tanya's nursery that will be dedicated to the high school lot. Then he went over and did the initial clearing of the lot, which he charged $350 for. So how would you record these two transactions? Now, as a note here, in the real life scenario, you would need to make sure that customers can be specified on expense forms. This is done in the accountant settings on the expense tab under track expenses and items by customer. In the sample company, though, this feature is already turned on, so we don't need to do this step. But just know in a real life scenario, if you are going through the similar scenario, uh, you would need to make sure that this is in fact turned on. So first we will create the expense for the fertilizer purchase. We're gonna click on the plus new button and then select expense. That plus new button is up here. Go ahead and click on that. And then under vendors, you will select expense. Now we need to fill it out when it comes up. In the payee field, we're going to select Tanya's nursery. Go ahead and click into it. You can scroll or you can start typing her name in there. Once you find Tanya's nursery, go ahead and click on that. 
Now you'll notice that after clicking on Tanya's nursery as the payee, the category will fill in as job expenses right here. We're gonna leave that as is. In the description field, we're going to type fertilizer. So click into that box and type fertilizer. Did I spell that correctly? Fertilizer, there we go. Um, and then remember the amount for it was $100. So in the amount field, you're gonna delete what is there. And this is just pre-populating from a previous expense um, related to Tanya's. It's a setting in accounts and settings. And so that's why it's all showing up here. Um, so go ahead and delete what is currently there and type in $100. When you click out of the box, you will see that QBO has automatically updated the amount for that expense. In the customer field, we're going to select high school lot. Click into this customer field. Um, you can start typing or you can click into it and start scrolling. Um, you can see high school lot, that's sub customer of Ocean View Road. Go ahead and click on that once you find it. Now that, note that we use the category details grid here because Craig does not track his purchases of fertilizer specifically. It's meaning it's not in the products and services list. Indicating fertilizer on the description here just provides more detail for later. So if this was a product and service, we would put it in the item details grid, but since it is not, um, it is just going to stay up here. And just having that extra description is always really helpful. Um, in real life, I would highly recommend it um, wherever you can, just so you can make note of it and understand what the particular expense or the transaction is actually for. So go ahead and click on save and close. We are all done with this expense and it has now been saved. <clears throat> now we're going to create the invoice. So next to, um, or we're gonna click on new transaction and then select invoice. Go ahead and click on that down arrow and then select invoice for the uh, invoice transaction to appear. Now you could have clicked on that plus new button and gone to invoice the same uh, process that we had done for the expense, but by doing it directly from the customer uh, profile, you have all of their information already populated for you. So it's just like a nice way, if you're already in the customer record and you need to create the invoice, that would this would be the better way to do it because it's quicker, all the information is already filled in for you. Uh, and that's exactly what I just said right here. So we're gonna complete the remainder of the invoice as described in the scenario. So on the first line in the product service field, we're going to select installation. So click into that two times to scroll or you can start typing um, in the, uh, in you can start typing installation for it to show up. Once you find it, go ahead and click on it. The rate fee set that he was invoicing them for was for $350. Now in the rate field right now, um, it defaults to 50, but we want it to be 350. And then we are all done here. You click out of it, you see QBO has automatically updated it. Now we just need to click on the down arrow next to save and send to select save and close. Go ahead and click on that down arrow right there and then select save and close. And now that invoice has been saved. Now we could always um, have done a save and send, which would have sent the invoice directly to this, um, to the customer here. Um, but since we don't have that ability here in the sample company, um, we just save and close it. So just know that that is an option for you to have it saved directly or sent directly to the customer when you are um, invoicing them for something. All right. so. Part three of this scenario, Craig would like to see a report showing his profitability so far for the new high school lot job compared to the other Freeman Sporting Goods locations. So how would you create this report? Let's find out. QBO already provides a profit and loss report organized by customers, so that's what we're going to start with. From the left navigation bar, we need to get into the reports center by clicking on reports. Then the left navigation bar is over here on the left hand side. Reports is about halfway down. Go ahead and click on that. And now we're gonna look for the profit and loss by customer report in the business overview section. So scroll down a little bit. You could click on profit and loss, but if you click on profit and loss by customer, it's already organized that way for us. So go ahead and click on that. 
and you will see that the resulting report currently shows each customer in a separate column. We only want the Freeman Sporting Goods locations and so we need to customize it a little bit. To do so, we're going to click on Customize. That's up at the top here. Click on that. Now to only select some of the information in QBO, we use a filter. In this case, we only want to see the Freeman Sporting Goods locations. So click on the down arrow next to filter to expand that section. That is right here. And now in the customer field right here, we're going to click on the down arrow and then click on the checkbox next to all Freeman Sporting Goods locations. So just click on that down arrow right here, and then you can scroll until you find Freeman Sporting Goods. You want to click on each of those locations. There's a total of four. You can click out of this, and then you can go ahead and click on run report. Now this time the report shows only the total for each count um, uh, for each of the Freeman Sporting Goods locations. So here are is each location and then here are the different products and services that are associated um, with the profit and loss. Um, so that way you can actually see how everything is do uh, how everything is looking per um, per location. Finally, Craig would like to see a report showing his profitability of all products on just the Freeman Sporting Goods locations. So how would you edit to the, the edit your report to show this? In the display columns field or by field, we're going to select products and services. So scroll back up here, it's displaying it by customers right now. We want products and services. So click on that down arrow. And then towards the bottom of that list is products and services. Go ahead and click on that. And then we need to run the report one more time. Click on run report. And now this time, the display columns are now the individual products. The report is still filtered by only showing um, transactions for Freeman Sporting Goods. So in a real life scenario, it would be a good idea to edit the report heading right here to indicate that it's just for Freeman Sporting Goods. But as you can see here, as we scroll through, um, this is what it is showing. Um, it's changed the columns now to all of the individual products. And then over here, we still have all of the different categories for that uh, profit and loss, the income and the expenses. But that's it. That's how you would set up and create reports with sub customers. Now, if you liked this exercise and you want to do more like it, or if you would like more information about that advanced level pro advisor certification course, be sure to click on the link below in the description. And I will see you in the next exercise.